Um, for me, the Dome experience has been life changing. Are you in the market for a new garage door or need to repair your old one? It's winter time and that means snow, wind, and freezing temperatures. All things that can cause sticky locks and damage to your garage door. If you're experiencing any issues with your commercial or residential garage door during the winter months, call Cameron Hall and his team at Doors Plus. Don't be trapped outside in the cold because of a poorly maintained garage door. Call Doors Plus today at 402-590-5800 or visit them online at doorsplusllc.com. Doors Plus, garage doors and more. Action Plumbing, Heating, Air, and Electric brings exciting career opportunities for you or someone you know. They are now hiring plumbers, electricians, and HVAC techs and installers to continually build their professional team. They offer competitive pay and full benefits packages that include health, dental, vision, PTO, and 401k options. Action has created a positive team environment for over 50 years. Apply online at actionlincoln.com. For over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now, they're inviting you to join their mission. If you are passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. Old School with DP and Jay. Do you think it's too early to talk about Patrick Mahomes as the greatest of all time? You know, to be honest with you, I think he might be on ahead of the pace. It would definitely on, on pace, maybe ahead of the pace. I think right now everything that he does is going to get over overblown, and I think people <laughs> so quickly forgot the 20-year run of the Patriots. Not five, six years. 20-year run of Tom Brady and the Patriots. On 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Hi, Sean Callahan here of HuskerOnline.com, inviting you to join us here on 93.7 The Ticket. Every Saturday morning now in our new time, we're on from 8 to 9 with the weekly Husker Online radio show. We'll give you the latest in recruiting. We'll talk about what's going on with both football, basketball, and we'll probably share a few stories from the inside. It's every Saturday morning right here on 93.7 The Ticket. It's the Husker Online radio show from 8 to 9 a.m. 93.7 The Ticket is proud to provide listeners with daily opportunities to win contests and prizes on our airwaves, and we'd like to take this opportunity to remind you of a couple rules. All participants must be 20 or older and must wait 30 days after winning a prize before participating in another contest. Once you win, you have 30 days to pick up your prize at the KNTK Studios, 1040 O Street in Lincoln, or your prize will be forfeited. Thank you for participating in our contest, and thank you for listening to 93.7 The Ticket. Weekly wrap sessions with All-American quarterback Steve Taylor, Nebraska Football Hall of Famer. Blitz is on. Taylor picks it up. Fires. Touchdown, Nebraska. Canadian Football League Grey Cup champion. Taylor again, wide open. First team All-American quarterback Steve Taylor. Five for Steve Taylor. That is a new Nebraska record. Here we are. It is Wednesday, and that means it's time for weekly wrap sessions with All-American quarterback Steve Taylor. Of course, there's been a lot going on in the sports world, a lot going on in the Husker world since we last talked to Steve. But we always like to know what's been going on in Steve's world this last week. How's things been going for you, Steve? My world is just crazy right now. We got all this national real estate stuff with these lawsuits and everything. I got a couple of my daughters living at home right now. One's pregnant. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> she's 29 and she's pregnant and and it's like she, she's an alpha and she just like wants to run my house <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> she's all over me about everything <laughs> everything dude i'm like oh man <laughs> uh, so i'm just i'm just that's what happens when you have three girls and one wife so you really got four girls and you just get teamed up on that. Yeah. Yeah. So. And that's maybe why you go out golfing a little that's bit. That's why I golf. <laughs> exactly why I golf. That's why I golf and that's why I drink. <laughs> no, nah, it's just been crazy, man. Yeah. yeah. We had a big powwow meeting yesterday because I don't know if you're aware of all these, you know, all these uh, real estate settlements and uh-huh. stuff with NAR and everything. And it's just been crazy. So we're getting ready for, getting ready for all that stuff, how it's going to play out this spring, summer. 
So, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's always a, never a dull day in housing, right? No, I'm trying to see how I can, <laughs> how I can get in that class action suit. <laughs> All the money the lawyers are making. Uh, I guess I did sell my house in California, so maybe I could hmm. get part of that. We'll find something in there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, how's your bracket doing? Did you fill out a no, bracket this no, year? No, no. no. I, I quit doing brackets about 25 years ago. My wife beat me every time when I was in Canada. <laughs> So now what we do is that we just start from the Sweet 16. Oh, okay. Well, it's a good yeah. time then. Yeah. So I got I to gotta do some thinking here. I got what? When does that start? Friday? Uh, Thursday. Thir- yeah. Tomorrow. So tomorrow, I got to right. get it done tonight. And then, though, and I like that because you get to watch the teams a little bit. Yeah. And, um, and, and go from there. So I chicken out and we just, we do this. We start the Sweet 16. It's a very so, it's a very chalk bracket this year. So if you did, yeah. you know, a lot of America still feels pretty good about their bracket uh, because most of the higher seeds won. Yeah, which will make well, more, except for one. Yeah, yeah, not I everybody. Think. Kentucky yeah. didn't make Kentucky. it. Kentucky, uh, which uh, <laughs> threw a lot of people's brackets off. Yeah, um, but Creighton's still involved. Beat Creighton. You know, in. Yeah, outlasted Oregon. Yeah, I was up late for that game. Man. Yeah, that was a good one. Double overtime. I was. I, I, was, I thought I could have coached that <laughs> because I watched the Oakland game, which. The way that went down, yeah, and then a Creighton game, and you know, but that's one thing about basketball, man. It's never over. It's like never over till it's like over, yeah. And all the the files and the, all that kind of stuff, and the way they play it is just it's too dramatic. Yeah, try to extend the game. <laughs> it's, too, it's, too, it's just too. It's it's great. It's madness. It's clear March madness, dude. But yeah, it's just so much fun to watch, man. Yeah, those guys are so good, and everything's on the line, and um, it's just fun to watch. You never know. You never know what you never know what's going to happen. And that's why you play the game. Um, so and, it's fun. And for Nebraska too, I don't know if you watched the Nebraska. No, game. I, I did. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Any any thoughts on that one? No, there's not too many uh, good ones. It was just it was a. I I told my buddy I texted him. I said Dude, that just sucks. Yeah. I mean, they had a good run, and um, yeah, they just ran out of gas. Yeah. But that's and, it's a different level of play on a national scale. You know. Yeah. So, and Texas a name was just hitting everything. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah, know what they you were. do. Yeah, you, you saw what happened to them. But anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it was. I just felt for Nebraska. I would like to have a little better performance, but you know. Well, it's kind of interesting too yeah. for Nebraska. They've lost three players now um, from the team, and nobody that's going to really uh, impact it too much moving forward. I mean, you you hope for the best for these guys as they move on. Yeah. Um, but uh, if you missed it, uh, Blaze Kata was the latest Husker. Uh, men's basketball player in the transfer portal, Ramel Lloyd uh, and Eli Rice also in. Uh, Lloyd oh. and Kata did not play. Yeah, they didn't play uh, um, this yeah. year, so not too much to miss miss out there. Eli Rice, which which kid is from Iowa? The gambling thing. Which one is that? Uh, he's still on the he's team. Still, okay, he's yeah, still, yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah. we'll, we'll kind of see there. Eli Rice was a promising young player, but um, he got injured and never got back in the rotation. Yep. So we'll kind of see what. Yeah. You know, I'm interested out of out of those guys, especially to see where Eli Rice falls. But yeah. just asking you, I guess. You know, having been in this is this is the comparison to pro sports because I'm going to ask you more <laughs> about your pro time than at Nebraska. But yeah. that, the, the transfer portal kind of feels like free agency now. Well, that, that's, um, that's what I said from day one. How quick does it turn? You know, the season's over, and you have ideas of maybe that this is the, you. You know, you maybe want to search out a different team you're talk, obviously you're talking collegiate or well it's tough because well, it's it's tough comparison because free agency you know obviously yeah. you know that's coming but well, i guess how how quickly is the season over is the season over because <laughs> it's just it just seems really quick to me just to be like all right we've gave it everything we got yeah i'm those, leaving those kids normally know the writing is kind of on the wall a little bit the yeah. kids are unhappy or not getting the playing time they want so they they have an idea already that they're going to bail um, you know, so it's not surprising. You know, I tell you one thing, the grass is not always green on the other side. Yeah. You know, and your stock may not be what you think it is, and your stock may have gone down, you know. So they, they you gotta really be careful with that. Yeah. You know, but uh with everything that's going on, uh kids are just looking to play and um looking for an opportunity, but um it's not necessarily the, the best thing to jump ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, you hope the best for these guys moving forward, but it's kind of like a... Do you really? Well, as I said, it's kind of like one of your exes where it's like, I yeah, I, wanna, like, I say you hope the best, but I really mean not as good as what I do, but, you know, yeah. like, I really just kind of want to forget about you. No, I wish. Yeah, they're, they're, they're no longer a Husker, dude, so good luck yeah. to you, you know, and uh, we'll see you around. Um, yeah, that's kind of how I was with, you know, even when Taylor Martinez, Taylor Martinez, even when Adrian, Adrian Martinez yeah. left, you know, um, 
you are you you're kind of a husker than you're not. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh but his situation was different. I guess he was he was a grad student finished up, so he put his time in. And he had broken enough records. <laughs> <laughs> he would have had nine years at Nebraska, so they all would have stand. Do you have more of a connection? Like, obviously, you do have more of a connection, but like, when you wear jerseys and you're part of these different teams in, in at yeah. each stage of your career, um, are there are there places? And it's kind of funny because I've talked to Strick about this before, and it's just kind of been based on his experience of how he was treated. Sometimes uh-huh. he doesn't necessarily claim Vancouver too much that he played there. I don't yeah. know if there's anything like that for you, but no, no, it's like that for me. Do you still I'm feel forced. like you're as much part of each team that you yeah. were on. Yeah. Two teams. Yeah. I do. yeah. Edmonton and Calgary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I spent both of my, the bulk of my career in Alberta and actually Edmonton and Calgary were rivals. But uh, yeah, I, I consider myself an, more so a stampeder versus an Eskimo, but definitely an Eskimo went to the great cup. My first, my my second year, um, just because of the ties that we made and the bond that we had with those players, and uh, you know that's where I was like the number one pick or whatnot, and had and had had two really good years um, for the most part, and then Calgary I was there for four four years, you know, so we spent a lot of time with those guys, so we had a core of guys there that were consistent for about four years, and um, so you have a bond there and everything, and and that's where we won the Great Cup too, went went to the Great Cup twice with Calgary, um, so I, I consider that. My two. Um, now, when I finished up with um, Ottawa and Hamilton, when I was traded, um, not not so much, mm. not so much. Um, and I was on the tail end of my career. Could have played another three or four years, but I uh, just decided it was time to hang it up. But yeah, I uh, I'm, I'm an Eskimo, then I'm Stampeder. Yeah, and Calgary probably the most. Yeah, that's interesting though. So you just you know, even though you put on the jersey for somebody else, it doesn't feel it's not the same as putting on the jersey in your prime or where you had more success. Yeah, no, nah, it, it, no, it doesn't. And, and of course, you know, you're being compensated. So that, that helps a little bit. Yeah. But no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, I think, um, and it depends on too, the team I originally drafted, if you're trading, how long you're there. But uh, yeah, I wonder if that's, does, I always wonder if that's like something like, I love each one of my kids the same, but you don't love each no, one of your no, kids the, the same. You don't love each <laughs> I, one of these I kids. I tell my kids, I, Samantha, <laughs> Samantha's the favorite, my younger one. She, she, I love them all. There's no question. I love them all, yeah. but, Sam, Sam was, I wouldn't say favorite, but she's a less dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> more consistent. <laughs> easier on you. Easier, easier on me. So uh, Sam can do no wrong. And plus she's the last, she's the last one, you know, my, yeah, my oldest one and my middle child, you know, but uh, yeah, you love them differently. You love them, but you love them differently. Every parent, you, every parent would tell you that, but you kind of favor one. More so the other, you're more prone <laughs> to maybe do this one for that one versus the other one. Yeah. You try to balance it out. You know, I, I, I've done that, you know, you know, split the pie equally, but you know, you're just a little nicer when you give it to one versus the other. You don't, you don't. Uh, Dion's got <laughs> rankings for his kids. You, I bet he does. As far as giving he rankings out, yeah. <laughs> it yeah. depends on what you've been doing to him lately. Uh, yeah. yeah, which is, I think, fair enough, I suppose, for some parents. <laughs> and they and they know how to milk that too. Yeah, they know they they know how to they know how to they know, they know how to milk that. So <laughs> they know they know they all love their mom though. I tell you that. Yeah. They, yeah, they love their mom more than anything. So, <laughs> well, I, don't, ask- I don't think that's fair, but they do. Yeah, well, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> mom can do no wrong. Yeah. Maybe my middle child calls her out a little bit, but uh, <laughs> mom can do, and they always have her back. Mm. They always have her back. Never mind. <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess in a way, you probably raised them fair, you know, fairly to do that. So, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe not not all uh, against you, but <laughs> for having yeah. their mom's back, that's probably a good yeah. thing most of the time. Yeah, it is. Um, I did want to so, ask you this too. In the tournament, I don't. You mentioned Oakland briefly, and yeah. and, and did you do you feel like Kentucky with John Calipari? They announced he's going to return for his 16th oh, he season. <laughs> he has a lifetime contract, yeah, doesn't I mean, he? <laughs> deep, it's either that or pay him God, boatloads I, of cash. How did you, how did you negotiate that deal? Just uh, winning a championship, <laughs> I suppose. Well, just one recruiting well. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I get it though. But do you think that there's a problem with them and, and at, at uh, just the age? Obviously, at football, it'd be completely different. You can't have guys, you know, a team made of guys straight out of high school yeah. but there's kind of been this bigger question um and jay wright a former villanova coach uh kind of brought it up is do you think now with covid and nil and guys sticking around longer in college because there's more emphasis you yes. know, more of a reason to that these freshman teams maybe are not the best way to for calipari to move forward 
Even Agreed. if they're, they're all NBA unless, lottery guys. Yeah, yeah, unless they can just jail and get it done. And you know, but North Carolina did it a few years back, didn't they? They had a very young team. Yeah. And uh I think they won it or something like that. Um, you know, that's basketball is a little easier to do, but uh still takes a lot of a lot of talent. Um first of all, I mean, when you're at a program for so long, there comes a point where you, you can't get stale. You know, you can't. Mm -hmm. And um but it is Kentucky, and he's done a great job recruiting, and he's had you know a couple of rocky goals here the last couple of years with some early exits. But um, you know, I would think maybe you would want to change at some point. Cal, you know? Coach Cal, yeah, Coach you, Cal, you would think yeah. maybe just want to you know try something different and and do that because you just want to just it's like a reset button, start yeah. over again. That's really a tough call. But then again, you know, if you got something going, like the Duke coach, how long was he there before he called it quit? Oh yeah, you know? yeah. So, yeah. Well, and it's That's it's tough. interesting because Kentucky and Duke are primarily the teams that get a, a majority of the one and dones, and Duke hasn't yeah. had a, as much of a problem as Kentucky. So I don't know if it's just based just that. And then you're asking him, you know, I get the idea of maybe trying to jump into the transfer portal or bring up, but how is <laughs> so he's supposed just, to he's supposed to go on the recruiting trail? Turn down a guy that's going to be an NBA lottery pick for a guy that he thinks can develop and help him in three yeah. years. I mean that. That also might be difficult yeah, that's, for somebody that's, that's to do. Tough. That's tough, yeah. man. And he and apparently he likes to do the best for his kids, and that's yeah, ultimately get them in the NBA. Yeah. So yeah, and he and he's been, and I don't know about Kentucky feels about that, but he's been uh pretty straightforward that 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 his biggest goal is to get those guys to the next level, to get them drafted and yeah. to change their lives. Which is a which is a tall task. I mean, the elite only plays in the NBA. You kind of want to groom kids to to be successful when, fo when 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 basketball is done you know so you hate to put the primary emphasis on that but unfortunately a lot of those kids like that have they have those aspirations so and you cater to that and um that's how he's built his program yeah you know, that's that's his business philosophy so when we're we're waiting to see too how the uh, how the Matt Rule program comes along. We'll talk more about Nebraska <laughs> yeah. football. Troy Dannon's introductory press conference uh, and more. Yeah, I was going to tell you to get some Mariah Carey. It's her birthday today. Oh, we should yeah. have some Mariah Carey. We should stuff. give us some Mariah Carey. Yeah, ready. get some jam for her. How old is she? She doesn't age, so it hardly matters. <laughs> no, but... she doesn't age. <laughs> She's going to live forever. Yeah, Jesus. with that money, she can <laughs> maybe. <laughs> That's right. That seems to help out. All right, we'll take a quick break here on ninety three seven. The ticket. We'll be right back with weekly wrap sessions with All American quarterback Steve Taylor. I'm Karen Carr. I've been a realtor for 31 years. When I made a company change 12 years ago, I chose Lincoln First Realty, now NP Dodge. It's the oldest independently owned realty company in the country. Since becoming NP Dodge, we've continued our tradition of community involvement. Our management and staff are always available to offer support in marketing, technology, social media, and educational opportunities. Expand your career with NP Dodge. Call Eric at 402-434-2222. Not many businesses can say they've made it 60 years, but Madsen's Bowling and Billiards can. With 12 bowling lanes and the biggest pool room in Nebraska, where else would you go to enjoy an afternoon or evening? There's a great daily specials like $2 Tuesdays, games of bowling, shoe rentals, draft beers, and tacos, all just $2 each. Have a delicious burger at EJ's Lounge before or after your bowling or pool session, and you'll leave satisfied. Madsen's Bowling and Billiards at 47th and Dudley. Rico here with HIS Auto Care at 70th and Van Dorn, letting you know HIS is a great place to bring your vehicle for service. With superior service, bumper to bumper, we'll treat your vehicle like it's your mother's. It doesn't get any better than that. So call 402-488-8934 and HIS Auto will make you glad you did. 5% off, mention this ad, and for sure your mother will be proud you called. 402-488-8934, HIS Auto Care, 70th and Van Dorn. God bless you. Hey there, fellas. It's your girl, Jordan, with Sarder Heyman Jewelry. Women may be complicated, but I make sure buying jewelry isn't. Your gal has a style, and you can figure this out. Is she more of a classic necklace kind of gal, or does she rock the boho chic vibe with layers of delicate bracelets? This is crucial intel. Not trusting your intel? Stop in the store, and we'll sort out the details. I promise to make this super easy. 
Until next time, this is Jordan at Sarder Heyman Jewelry. Happy shopping, guys. Are you working in or looking to get into the electrical construction industry? The electrical workers of Local Union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits. Call Mike at 402-875-1034 to apply. Start your electrical career today. Mosaic is a nonprofit whole person healthcare organization that embraces God's call and relentlessly pursues opportunities that empower people with diverse needs to live their best lives. Mosaic in Southeast Nebraska, serving Lincoln and Beatrice, would like to invite you to their monthly Discover the Possibilities Tour events. Events are held on the third Wednesday of every month and are a great way to understand Mosaic's mission. To RSVP, please contact Melindy at 402-429-0088 or visit mosaicinfo.org slash southeast Nebraska. Hi, Sean Callahan here of HuskerOnline.com inviting you to join us here on 93.7 The Ticket every Saturday morning now in our new time. We're on from 8 to 9 with the weekly Husker Online radio show show we'll give you the latest in recruiting we'll talk about what's going on with both football basketball and we'll probably share a few stories from the inside it's every saturday morning right here on 93 7 the ticket it's the husker online radio show from 8 to 9 a.m wall-to-wall wine and spirits is now open in lincoln shop our expansive collection of wine beer spirits and cigars at 5040 north 27th street from top shelf liquor to crowd favorite beer, Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits has a beverage for every taste and every budget. Plus, join our loyalty program to earn rewards and save on future purchases. Shop Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits at 5040 North 27th Street in Lincoln. That's 5040 North 27th Street. Constructors is now hiring for all positions, with laborers starting at $23 and up based on experience. Constructors has immediate job openings for laborers, mechanics, bridge builders, operators, and drivers. Start your new career today. Constructors offers great pay, health, dental, and vision insurance, paid time off, paid holidays, and so much more. Join the crew today and be a part of Nebraska's oldest paving company dating back to 1908. For a complete list of openings and to apply online, visit ConstructorsLincoln.com. When you were a kid, clubs were cool. Robotics club and space club and stuff like that. But what do adults get? book clubs and quilting clubs nah forget that how about margarita clubs and old-fashioned clubs get to upside bar and lounge for the best clubs in town try all 10 varieties of upside margaritas or old fashions and take home a free souvenir glass grab the whole crew and pair it with taco night on mondays or whiskey wednesdays upside bar and lounge at 29th and pine lake for over 15 years integrated life choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in lincoln and throughout nebraska they provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now, they're inviting you to join their mission. If you're passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. High schoolers, unleash your creativity and learn about potential careers in broadcasting at the Digital Expressions Media Camp. Have fun, make friends, and get hands-on experience with video and radio production June 9th through the 14th at the University of Nebraska at Kearney. Scholarships are available from the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and spots are limited. Learn more at digitalexpressionscamp.com. That's digitalexpressionscamp.com. Now back to weekly rap sessions with All-American quarterback Steve Taylor. The 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. We're back here on 93.7 The Ticket. And this is weekly rap sessions with All-American quarterback Steve Taylor. Uh, I did want to say uh, or get your thoughts on this because I just saw oh, this as I was oh. scrolling through Twitter. Uh -oh. Ice Cube has offered Caitlin Clark five million dollars to join the Big, big three, three League. Yeah, oh. are, are you a big fan of Big Three? Have you watched a little bit of it? My nephew played in it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah I, I, I went to a couple of games. I haven't watched it since he kind of retired from that. Um, I know they do have a TV contract now. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, <laughs> can that's you do? Can you do both? Yeah, I guess you, the deal would the deal would be for eight regular season games and potentially oh, two playoff in. games. She's it in, would dude. allow her to play in the NBA in the WNBA. 
Oh, definitely. She'd still be allowed. Yeah. Oh, she. Yeah. How much? She's got to go in. How much? And she would fit right in with that. Yeah. Oh, dude. She because made, they've got a four point shot, right? I think. She no, I'm just talking go right about just the, the whole, shot. just the whole, <laughs> just the whole swag environment. Oh yeah. Deal. Yeah. Oh, she'd be a game changer with that. Smart move. Smart it would move. draw a lot of eyeballs. Yeah, it would be interesting. And then, of course, obviously, you have the uh, the girls versus the guys type of discussion too. Um, so that would that that would be interesting. That would that that's uh, <laughs> at least draw some that, eyeballs. That dude is always so forward thinking. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so oh we'll see. That's, that's quite the offer. Yeah, I'm I'm interested <laughs> to see where that goes. I'd definitely be interested to watch. So she would uh, have to she there. would have to play with the men's ball though, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. I wonder if that make a big difference for her. Yeah. I always thought that was weird too, because I, you know, I play pickup quite a bit, and I, I could, you yeah. Know, sometimes a, a girl will come in and play, and I wonder about that same thing too. It's like, you know, it, yeah. it's asking a little bit more to change the, the weight of the ball. Yeah, the weight of the ball and the size. Yeah, you know, so yeah, yeah. So I think she can handle it. Yeah, I, I think you, you, you know, you know, <laughs> yeah, you can get used to it pretty quick. I tell you, man, I'm, I'm kind of a Caitlin Clark fan. I yeah. like watching her. Yeah, I know, no. I like her personality. I like her swag, you know, and that, that's just what these girls do, you know, but uh, I think she's great for the game. Oh, no doubt about that. Girl can play, man. Yeah. If she played yeah. at like, I don't know, North Carolina or something, we'd have no problem saying that we enjoy love, you know, watching Caitlin Clark. It's the fact she's at Iowa. You might get a little bite back, but <laughs> yeah. Iowa's nothing, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't, 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 don't even give them that much power, man. <laughs> I would Seriously? understand the front of your mind. Yeah, enough. no, yeah. I'm like, I don't, I don't have problems with Iowa at all, dude. <laughs> Not at all, man. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah. Uh, back in your day, was it was Oklahoma that was the biggest problem? Oh, Oklahoma. Who was, Col- then Colorado, Colorado came would be right, yeah. right in there, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. But you, I mean, you played in just fu- against fun programs, Florida State, oh, Mon- Florida State, Michigan, South Carolina, and, Michigan, yeah. UCLA. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude. Yeah. No, we had to. Well, but not rivalries, but still a lot of fun. Uh, Oklahoma the, State, Oklahoma program. State was trying to make it one year. It was trying to call mm. when they had Gundy and Hartley Dykes and Barry Sanders. They was trying to call themselves the triplets. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the <laughs> second they, iteration. They finally had a team huh? that was going to, you know, and we beat them both times. And, yeah, <laughs> but anyway, but they they had, they had some good years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They certainly did, yeah. uh, and they've been having uh, some pretty good years under Gundy. You know, for as long as he's been yeah. going there, no. uh, Nebraska looking to get back at least you know to that level. I think people would be pretty happy. <laughs> <laughs> pretty yeah. happy with, I guess. Yeah, he's kind of been relevant. Yeah. yeah. Well, there, I if I looked up his his run, it it, it, it probably is about the same. I think it was like mid two thousand, so maybe a little bit later. Than the uh, the run Nebraska's had of not, not right not doing as well. <laughs> yeah, I think people would, would love to have Mike Gundy. Yeah, he's he's, he's 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 been respectable. He's just I think he loses a lot of credit because of his, his haircut, <laughs> his mullet once in a while. Mullet, yeah, I think that I think that deters everyone for saying how, how how good they've been. Yeah, yeah, hard to watch. Like, give it up, man. <laughs> yeah, well, and it's interesting. There's a guy that that didn't uh, has probably had offers. I'm sure. He hasn't left his alma mater, and and maybe there's a ceiling there, maybe there's not, but he's feel he feels fine. And now the Big Twelve kind of just opened up for him. He's yeah, you know, now the big bad uh, ceiling that I just talked about, the Oklahoma's, the Texas, uh, you know, the Texas A and M's and Nebraska's they're all making the past, a move. They're all gone. Yeah, he's gonna have to. They're gonna have to find a home though somewhere. Maybe yeah, yeah. we'll see about the future of the Big Twelve. Yeah. Um, the ACC is now um starting to yeah. let it be known that the, the top of that conference wants yeah. out yeah yeah that's so the future is, is one still big just, happy league man <laughs> right it's hard to yep got it gotta get in it's hard to dissect what's going on what they call uh, it where what, it's going. what does my daughter call it fomo fomo yeah, yeah. fear missing out, fear missing out. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> never heard that term until my daughter went to college uh, well years thanks back. To, you know coach tom osborne and, and ad tom osborne i should say nebraska was well, well ahead of the curve on on missing out they, yeah. they jumped to the right ship early <laughs> he was he, he, did, he sure did then he said he said the heck with this yeah we got our t- national championship let's take the money now <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, we did have Troy Dannon introduce himself at the press conference or at his oh. introductory press conference, I should say, uh, yesterday. And one thing that it was kind of interesting is that there's no hiding the, the collect, like as we change the ever changing landscape of college sports is that he, not only is he not hiding that he wants to work with the collective, he figures it to be a, a, among his, his m- most important role as athletic director yeah. is to work with the collectives. Um, from what I gather from a few of my inside sources, they're trying to get that under one umbrella. 
mm. with the university. Yeah. And not let it be outsourced. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like yeah. it is right now. Yeah. So we'll see if they ultimately end up with that. It'd just be a division of the athletic program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I wonder, I mean, that would obviously bring changes to college football altogether because some schools and it makes sense would benefit it makes from sense. it. Yeah. yeah, it makes sense, you know. Yeah. More yeah, it hands does. on. It makes sense. Total sense, man. Because right for a while, and now it's it's just weird because when it started, it was like you have to look the other way and act like you don't know about it. Yeah, and the coaches know the talents that they want. Right. They're they're in their they're they're in their homes. Yeah. You know, so I think they can make more of a deal with that. Well, it doesn't make yeah. any sense. Like you have the head of the program who should be most involved whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. He can't say anything. We'll have this guy over here that can <laughs> yeah. and work on the money his man. Behalf. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and so it's it is you gotta you gotta eliminate that that yeah. that middle man. Yeah, I think Bring altogether it all would it will make it interest it will yeah. make it better that way. But the other thing too is, and I've seen this in the past is that uh, people feel like this whole, oh, power to the, the people. And when I say the people, the, the, the donors, <laughs> power to the donors, they are, they are able to kind of change college football the way it is. Um, and, and you could, you know, you could go out there and help your team or whatever. Um, they think this might be a wave, like all this, the, the vast amounts of money that are going into the collectives that are going into these teams. Do you see that going up over the, the years? Or do you think that there is no, kind I of this initial thought of like, let's do it, let's do it. But as soon as somebody pours in, I think five gonna, million to a quarterback no, that doesn't pan out, they I, might I not want to do it again. I think you're gonna have a salary cap. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have an NIL cap. Yeah. You know, that uh if it's all under the same umbrella, that you and each university, power five or whatnot, will have a salary cap like they do professionally. And uh that way you have some type of regulation, right? Things yeah. in place, and um you can deal with it better that way. It's so, so yeah, so interesting. Yeah. Because it's, it's you know, college football was its own thing and, and kind of was had its own charm to it that it wasn't a professional sports league. Mm -hmm. But now we've crossed the line to where you can go back and now you kind of just need to make yeah. it a professional sports yeah, league and, and, and organize it. And you way. have to have it more equitable between the schools. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the schools that have all the huge NIL packages have more to offer versus maybe the Rutgers, you know, schools like that. Yeah. Um, you know, so if you're part of this league or Big Big Ten, where those funds, all the revenues are dis distributed evenly, equitable, then each team can make a valid, you know, they can make a play for how they want to recruit players and sign players and operating under a salary cap of oh, some sort. Another thing that kind of was uh, interesting out of the, the Troy Dannon introductory press conference was mm -hmm. the whole kind of talk about stadium renovations. He's not, he, he admittedly was not, uh, all the way dialed in on that. Um, well, he's he just gonna got be here. cut up to speed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but you, yeah. you kind of figure that's one of the one of the overarching uh, talking talking points. Maybe w when you when to decide to take the job. Um, I was kind of surprised that he. I mean, he was very straight that he. You know, he he needs more information before he can kind of talk about that. Do you think that that? And, and, but I mean, the overarching. Uh, I think that's a mindful approach. <laughs> yeah, I really. I don't think yeah. that's 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 should be at the top of the list right now. The, the renovation. Yeah. I'm not in that south corner, though. Right. <laughs> Those people, <laughs> you know, they, they want some regular bathrooms. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, I'm, he, he's going to have to look at the totality of, of, of the budget, of what's going on, obviously, and uh, see where, what needs the most, what's the most pressing that needs to be dealt with before he comes on board. I mean, no, he's on board. Yeah. But then kind of, you know, prioritize what they need to do. Well, and his yeah. his theme was winning. I mean, they want to win, yeah. and and he wants to be able to to you know clear anything that's in the way of his coaches from winning. Yeah. Um. Would you think stadium think renovations I, help I, win? No, or no, no, not that's really. Way, that's that's down the list. Yeah, that's down the list. I would say it's probably right now fourth or fifth. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. So we'll we'll see if they continue to do that. I, I thought that was interesting. Um. And 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 altogether, it, you know, it, it's just kind of obvious that this is a, a hire, um, partially made because of. Uh, uh, of uh, football, right? I mean, and yeah. football drives the the conversation. So, or that previous... do you think he and he and rule rule have a history? Yeah, relationship. You know, that relationship. Rule. And you know what? Yeah. Actually, I that's kind of nice to hear. Um, uh, when I when this when when all this happened, it was finally kind of good to see that we got an athletic director and a full head football coach that have a relationship mm -hmm. that's going to support each other. Uh, it's been kind of rocky. I mean, 80s have we had. <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> so many of them. I guess you could say probably since, really, Polini was hired by Osborne, that relationship was probably okay. Mm -hmm. But after that, it's just been 
is it hasn't been a, a a brotherhood, I think. Yeah. Uh, I, obviously, Ikehorst and Polini, you know, bumped heads and stuff. Who else am I forgetting? Yeah. Trev was. Trev came in when Scott wasn't there. I guess Moose was. Moose was kind of short lived. Right. <laughs> you know, he just handed the keys keys to the kingdom to Mr. Frost, and you know, he just kind of faded away. <laughs> 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 I don't think there was a relationship there. Um, you know, and then when Trev came on board, Scott was you know the. He was, he was, you know, towards the end. Yeah. You know, and Scott wasn't happy about that because he had lost his guy that supported him and gave him, gave him the keys to the kingdom. So now it's nice to see that you got a relationship with the head coach and the and the um, athletic director that that's good, that's positive, that obviously want to do this thing together and let's build this together. And so I, I was I was pleased to hear that. And that's why it happened so fast. Yeah. So quickly. And um, they're going to do everything they can to, you know, to get this thing going. Well, and I think it's interesting well, too, because Governor Pillen, I believe it was Governor Pillen uh, <laughs> that went up and, 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 you know, basically stated that, you know, if you're wearing Husker red, then we're going to cheer for you. And, and um, you know, that's one, one way of looking at it. And, and I think that that's pretty much clear for most Husker fans. Yeah, let's just get these politicians out of the athletic program. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I thought was interesting yeah, in, in the beginning that the governor just, at yeah, the just, AD. Just stay in your lane, stuff, man. But, well, I, I, and I appreciate Pillen. He's done some, you know, I like what he's trying to do with the taxes and everything. You know, just just let let them do their thing, and you mm. you run the you run the state. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah there's there's a lot of, a lot of other stuff that <laughs> needs stuff needs attention, attention, attention as well. So yeah. Uh, all right, let's take a quick break here again. This is weekly wrap sessions with All American quarterback Steve Taylor. We've got more from the dinner, uh, dinner press conference and just uh, more from. How about the kickoff rules? I want to get your thoughts on the new. I- NFL <laughs> coming uh, your way uh, this year. So we'll, we'll talk about that coming up next year on Weekly Rap Sessions with All-American quarterback Steve Taylor. Constructors is now hiring for all positions with laborers starting at $23 and up based on experience. Constructors has immediate job openings for laborers, mechanics, bridge builders, operators, and drivers. Start your new career today. Constructors offers great pay, health, dental, and vision insurance, paid time off, paid holidays, and so much more. Join the crew today and be a part of Nebraska's oldest paving company dating back to 1908. For a complete list of openings and to apply online, visit ConstructorsLincoln.com. My dream was to work in commercial banking, but it required a college degree and I didn't have one. I found out that Doan had classes for adult learners on the Lincoln campus and online. So I earned my bachelor's degree and five months later, I landed my dream job. I decided to continue my education and now I'm working on my MBA at Doan. For me, the Doan experience has been life-changing. Spring often marks the beginning of severe weather, which can lead to power outages. LES wants you to be prepared before the storm. Restock your emergency kit, update your info with LES, and if you encounter an outage, report it at les.com slash report. Rico here with HIS Auto Care at 70th and Van Dorn, letting you know HIS is a great place to bring your vehicle for service. With superior service, bumper to bumper, we'll treat your vehicle like it's your mother's. Doesn't get any better than that. So call 402-488-8934 and HIS Auto will make you glad you did. 5% 5% off, mention this ad, and for sure your mother be proud you called. 402-488-8934, HIS Auto Care, 7th and Van Doren. God bless you. Ooh, what a day. I could sure use an afternoon pick-me-up. Hold up. The new 93.7 The Ticket location has a milk coffee and tea inside? Oh, yeah. This is a game changer. Need an afternoon pick-me-up? How about a coffee or smoothie on your way to work? Stop by the Ticket Mill location on 1040 O Street to get your go-to drink or try out our new game day drinks exclusive to the Ticket Mill location. We know it'll make your day a mill yen times better. When you were a kid, clubs were cool. Robotics club and space club and stuff like that. But what do adults get? book clubs and quilting clubs nah forget that how about margarita clubs and old-fashioned clubs get to upside bar and lounge for the best clubs in town try all 10 varieties of upside margaritas or old fashions and take home a free souvenir glass grab the whole crew and pair it with taco night on mondays or whiskey wednesdays upside bar and lounge at 29th and pine lake 
Mosaic is a nonprofit whole person healthcare organization that embraces God's call and relentlessly pursues opportunities that empower people with diverse needs to live their best lives. Mosaic in Southeast Nebraska, serving Lincoln and Beatrice, would like to invite you to their monthly Discover the Possibilities Tour events. Events are held on the third Wednesday of every month and are a great way to understand Mosaic's mission. To RSVP, please contact Melindy at 402-429-0088 or visit mosaicinfo.org slash southeast nebraska. For over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now, they're inviting you to join their mission. If you are passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. This Friday is Good Friday, and you know what else is good? The incredible chocolates and confections at the Chocolate Season. Help us celebrate Good Friday by joining 93.7 The Ticket for live broadcasts from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Chocolate Season in Williamsburg Village. Come see how their chocolate is made. Enjoy Easter-themed treats and, of course, live radio. The Chocolate Season, March 29th from 8 to 2 with 93.7 The Ticket. I'll see you there. Your home is your empire. Protect it with Empire Fence. Get a free instant quote with the online estimating tool at empire-fence.com. See an upfront estimate with no hidden fees. An Empire Fence can provide privacy and improve the appearance of your home. Keep kids and pets in or out of your yard. Increase security and add value to your property. Visit empire-fence.com now to view the stylish and maintenance-free possibilities for your home and get a free instant online quote. Let Empire Fence protect your empire. Okay, it's time to sell the house. How do we even begin to choose from the hundreds of realtors in town? Easy. We make a pros list. You mean a pros and cons list? No, just a pros list. We need someone with pro photography to showcase the house in the best possible way. Pro marketing to make sure we get maximum exposure. Pro negotiations so we know we get the best price. This is one of those times where you already know the right answer, isn't it? You know it is. Ben Bleicher and Professional Realty Group. Contact Ben Bleicher and the team at Professional Realty Group of Virtual. Shire Hathaway's Home Services Ambassador online at prg-ne.com. The Captain for Sean Jackson. If I'm going to watch the men run around, I want to see them run around in tights, in shoulder pads, in helmet, mouthpieces, and gritting their teeth, squinting their eyes, some people closing their eyes, and smashing into each other. That's what I want to see. That's football. That's football. That's football. Don't nobody want to see no, no, uh, we shall overcome type football. They want to see some rock and sock hit you in the mouth football box. Exciting football. For over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now they're inviting you to join their mission. If you are passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. Now back to weekly rap sessions with All-American quarterback Steve Taylor on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Back here on 93.7 The Ticket, this is Weekly Rap Sessions with All-American quarterback Steve Taylor. And Steve, I wanted to, to get hey. your thoughts on some changes in the NFL, <laughs> in football as we know it. Uh, something yeah. that was kind of trialed in the XFL, now going to be brought to the NFL, uh, is a change to the kickoff return, which has been diminishing over the yeah. years with their amount of returns they've had because of concussion rates. They've, they've done everything they can to limit those. Now... They're pro return again, but it's a different than what we've seen in the past. <laughs> Essentially, all the players except for the kicker and the kick returner are going to be put in this zone yeah. on the returning side of the field. And so there's not going to be running down the field. You're just going to run 10 yards. That's where the collision starts. And that's where the return starts. <laughs> what are your thoughts on, uh, on this? My thoughts, you may be too young. You had the football game that vibrated, right? You yeah, set, yeah, yeah. You yeah, set the man up one, and you yeah. put the little football. Yeah. That's what it looks like. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. Yeah. And then they showed a clip of it in the what, XFL? 
Yeah. And that's, that's what it looked like. Yeah. <laughs> so, just a bunch of guys rattling around. <laughs> yeah. Trying wrong to, area to, to find a field. hole. <laughs> you, don't have, you don't have much room to work with. So I don't know about that. I mean, I didn't watch it in the XFL. I didn't watch, I didn't watch that football very much at all. So I didn't see how it played out, how exciting it was. But it looked like a cluster mess is what it looked like. Yeah. Um. So, <laughs> you know, nothing, nothing ventured, nothing game. Let them try it. It almost been better to do like a free kick, almost like a punt, a punt return type of deal. Yeah, like a, like a punt, like yeah, a free yeah, kick. Yeah, yeah. I think you, you, I think that could have been a little bit more exciting, and just in the format of actually have some kickoff returns. Yeah, it's you know? it's, it's weird because this has been a problem or been. Um... I guess been a, known as a problem yeah. or been been something well, they've been trying to tweak they with recently. They, ha- they haven't been a lot of returns. I mean, I, I, yeah, they just kick it out of the end zone, right? Yeah, yeah. Which was one way to fix the problem. Now they're again yeah. a little bit more pro return. Well, um, you just got to see how that plays out. I, I would. Th- you have to hold your blocks longer. Mm. I think the creases would be diminished. I was never on special teams, but your creases would be diminished. Because it'd be more difficult to set up wedges and left or right returns that you really develop and, you know, do some trickery and that kind of stuff. So we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. That that I would just have to wait and see. It didn't look too exciting to me, but. It changes some things as well as far as, like, you can, the onside kick, you're going to have to tell officials if you want to do an onside kick. Then you and can, then what? And then you can line up in the normal format the normal once format. again. Then, um, but it's not going to be a surprise. You can't do, there's no surprise on sidekicks anymore. No. And that's, that was kind of an advantage to do that. Almost like a quick kick. Yeah. At least a tactic that's kind of taken out. Yeah. Not always the best tactic. I think Scott Frost would tell you as much <laughs> looking back on it. Uh, so yeah. maybe they should have. Was that a tactic? Or that, was a, <laughs> that was, I'm just going to see if you're going to fire me move. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I never seen a guy was. try to win because of him more yeah. uh, than going ahead and just win because the players are getting it done. But whatever. Uh, they, they gave that their shot. Um, the other thing is touchbacks will now be marked at the 30 yard line at the 30 yard line, opposed to the, uh, what the 25, 25. but they've been moving. It used to be the yeah, 20. Now it's 20, the 20, but now it's all the way, now up, to all the way 30. up. Yeah. I, uh, I don't Shorten like the that. Field. I don't yeah. like that either. Yeah. It's hard enough to stop these offenses as it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and then the other thing too, is they, they're, they're now getting rid of the hip drop tackle, which is basically <laughs> using your weight. How these, these poor defenders, man, yeah. I feel, how are you supposed to tackle someone? It, it's just in general, but then especially like defensive, you think of a defensive back on a deep ball where you, you know, you already have, you know, watch your hands, watch holding, watch all that. How do you, I, and now even if they do catch it, watch the way you tackle the guy in desperation and the defensive backs are smaller. Those are the guys that do a lot of the hip drop tackles yeah, because if you're going up against a tight end, dude, I've never, I never, I've never even heard of such a thing. Yeah. Like I'm not a def, def, I talk to my defensive guys. If that's a taught, technique mm. it's almost like dragging a horse down or, or prey <laughs> yeah i'm visualizing a, a lion attacking a prey and jumping on the back of them pulling them down so i'm i'm i obviously it was a taught strategy and a taught tackle um i wonder if, if a player was more injury prone than yeah that. that's what they're saying that's yeah. what they're saying yeah, yeah i thought that i just feel for these guys man they're just promoting more offense more scoring um, and that would be that, that would make it very difficult to play defense. It does. It's hard enough to swing to play golf and try to hit a golf ball, and you got all these swing thoughts in your head. Let alone trying to tackle, not yeah. target, not do that. I mean that. Yeah. Well, and then there are still like tackles that you know if you go after you go low, you might blow out somebody's knee. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I mean, the high low. There's just there's it's very difficult. It's Every tough. year there's going to be more rules and restrictions. Yeah. I think on tackling and. At some point, what will the penalty be? Is did they say what the penalty is? Like how many yards? Uh, or I could look into. I'm that. sorry, I don't want. Yeah, I don't, want, I don't want to throw to, you on a bus. Oh, you're right. Yeah, like they that. were. They're trying to. I mean, uh, they're trying to ban it. So yeah, I would assume it would be a 15 yard penalty type of deal. Yeah, is it 15, 10, or five? I yeah. Mean, so, yeah, yeah. I'd assume it'd be a personal foul, but I'm not sure. I'm not for sure on that. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, the more, the more the NFL changes uh, football moving forward, and in in kind of the the way to make it a safer game. And no, stuff I give like it to that. them for that. They're yeah. always looking at ways to pay out less money in the future. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Where, wherever they can cut costs, let's do it. Right? Do you think there's and, an opportunity and, and to make it more exciting? Yeah. You know, well, more points, more offense. Yeah. You know, all that. That's what was nice about the CFL 
uh, it was a very exciting game because you, the scoring opportunity was so much more. Mm-hmm. Why know? was that? So, just because, like, uh, first of all, you have you have three downs to get you know to get ten yards, so it's really two downs to get mm-hmm. ten yards. So that that speeds up the game. Um, and then when you punt, if you miss a field goal, you know you can you can do that here though. But you can run it out. Like if you're down by one and you you you, you punt it, you have to bring it out. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you can lose the game. So the game itself has the way it's played is more exciting, is more offensively oriented mm. to give the, op- the opportunity to score more points. Now, they didn't do back. what like Arena did where you can have guys in motion. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they did oh, yeah. that too, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, that, that's just, that's always been the case. Yeah. Um, um, normally, just your running backs and your slot backs move. Your wideouts really don't move there very much. And that was something to get used to. I just never looked in the backfield. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. shotguns, I just... You know, but uh, so guys would just walk up and do things and stuff. And we do motion, but that you get used to. But the slot backs is a big difference because you can get a running start. Mm. So you got a guy coming full speed ahead of you. I mean, I wouldn't say full speed, but at least about, you know, 65, 70% of speed yeah. coming up. Mm. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's interesting. I just, I, I wonder what football will look like in 10 years. And I wonder if yeah. the NFL will look similar to college or if college kind of takes their own path and says, well, you know what? We're going to keep some of the old football um, mm. and maybe draw more eyes that way. I'm not sure. I think eventually you'll see it. I mean, just with injuries and stuff like that, yeah. and the concussions and the injuries. Yeah. I, I, collegiate will follow suit. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. And obviously they're, if it works, basically it the works. minor league system for yeah. NFL anyway. So you're probably going to want it to be as close <laughs> yeah. as possible. And yeah. in college in recent years has, you know, taking out, uh, stopping the time after getting a first down. I mean, they're they're actively kind of yeah. moving toward the NFL model. So uh, very interesting stuff. Very interesting days behind us and very interesting days ahead of us. Uh, here dude, I'm so excited for spring. All together. I'm excited for spring football and everything. And yeah, I said, Royals, when we have our, I think we touched, but when we have our next, uh, what, the pro day, we'll have a guy that's a possible first rounder. Yeah. In about three years of Rayola, would <laughs> yeah. that be cool? That would be cool. That'd be nice. Dude. Yeah. And maybe some others. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully plenty others. That's, yeah. that's the yeah. hope down the line. All right. That'll wrap it up for weekly wrap sessions with all American quarterback, Steve Taylor. Steve, once again, thanks for joining us today. Thank Rise you, my make, man. Make way for a happy hour coming next year at 93.7 The Ticket.